I've always been fascinated by the 18th century. It's always been my favourite period of history. And one of the things I love about it is that um, on the one hand, you have um, quite a, uh, you have the flowering of uh, the enlightenment and intellectual thoughts, philosophy, politics. But on the other hand, you still have quite a brutal society with things like the slave trade and the sex trade and um, blood sports and a very brutal system of crime and punishment. And that juxtaposition of those of this sort of very modern society on the one hand and a very kind of barbaric society on the other hand seemed to me a very fertile um, ground for writing a crime novel. Well, I get a huge amount of inspiration um, from my research. I, I usually, because my books are usually about um, a particular subject, so my first book was about the slave trade, my second book was about the sex trade, and I read quite a lot of um, specialist books about whatever the subject is. But then I try and put all the books to one side because I think that the, the story needs to be, it needs to be the king or the queen. Um, and so the, I, I put the books to one side once I know how the research informs my plot. Um, and then I only go back to it at the end um, as much as possible because um, I think that the imagination of the writer mustn't be the prisoner of the research, even though the research is incredibly important. That's a really good question. So I think it's important to always remember when um, writing and reading about history that just because rules existed it didn't mean that everybody followed them. And there, certainly in, in my book, Daughters of Night, um, The Life and Death of Lucy Lovelace, um, the, the heroine in that book, she is from a very privileged, uh, rich, upper-class world. She is a very educated woman. And there was certainly women who um, played very active parts in, in politics. There were women writers, there were women painters um, within the upper classes of, of society. And there were also women who were having um, affairs outside their marriages and pursuing the sort of freedom. But of course, they could also be really punished for, for stepping outside of the, the confines that society expected for them. And I try to illustrate that in the book. So I've tried, I tried very hard not to make Caro at any point um, do things that, um, that no woman would do. But she is certainly an unusual woman for her time, but not, um, there were women like her who really existed. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, there were fascinating, brilliant, intelligent women throughout history, and um, you, you know, any reading of, of any history book will provide you with so many examples of women doing interesting things, um, and always, always pushing at the boundaries that constrained them. And those sorts of characters have always held enormous appeal to me. Lucy Lovelace it was a book very much about women's lives, and it just seemed obvious to me that it should have a strong female character as the, as the heroine. Lucy Lovelace, um, that the book begins with my main character, Caro, finding the body of a murdered woman at the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. And the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens were, it was about 20 acres of, of gardens uh, on the banks of the River Thames. And there were, there were art exhibitions there and circus acts. And there was, you know, outdoor dining and dancing under the stars. Um, and it was a wonderful um, place where 
people, both the very high, so like the Prince of Wales had his own private supper box there, but also the very low in society, it only cost a shilling to enter. They could go there and they could look at the celebrities and they could buy this outrageously priced food and drink. And I think in the age of COVID, in an era of lockdowns, this would be a wonderful thing to bring back. And I say, so, you know, I'm, I'm, my campaign is to bring back the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. Absolutely. Um, so when I was very, very little, you know, about sort of six, seven years old, I was obsessed with, with Greek mythology. And I would read so many books about it. And um, the story of the Oresteia, which is um, a, a sort of theme of, of the book, was a great favourite of mine. And within that story there is um, a club of gentlemen who are obsessed with Greek mythology and they also use prostitutes and I when I read about these real clubs like the Hellfire Club and the Society of the Dilettante these are real life examples of, of a club like that and they were obsessed with Greek mythology and I just it was like a, you know the perfect discovery for me because um, I decided from that point on to have Greek mythology informing all aspects of the book um, and the 18th century they were absolutely obsessed with ancient Greece and ancient Rome so it was really easy to kind of weave that throughout the book um, and I was you know it was one of those discoveries from your research which is just perfect. <laughs> That's a really good question um, and one I've given a lot of thought to. Um, yes, absolutely. I, I have a lingering desire. I don't know whether I'll ever actually do it, but I would love to set, write a book set in the 1920s, um, which was a, just such an interesting period of... Um, and, and again, a bit like the 18th century, it was, it was on the one hand very forward-looking, but on the other hand, society was still quite restricted and tough for lots of people. Um, so that greatly appeals to me. And I'm also giving serious consideration to writing something set in the modern day. Um, and so that may be my next project. I'm, uh, I, I'm still thinking about that. <laughs>